Now to install the burner. The torch holder has two holes, a 13mm hole and a 10mm hole. The 10mm hole is for the rod, the 13mm hole is for the torch. Easiest way is to install the holder onto the torch, close to the air holes, and just nip up. Install the holder onto the rod, and just nip up. Now we will align the flame. To align the burner, you're going to need a case that you're going to anneal. This happens to be a 308, so we slip it on the wheel. Now you need to align the hole in the torch in there, where the crease right there, where the shoulder meets the neck. Slip it on there, tighten this up slightly. It's pretty good straight up. As you can see, the burner hole lines up perfectly to where the neck meets the shoulder. All we have to do now is to rotate the cylinder so it lines up so it's in the center of the case. Once you're happy with that position, tighten with the shifter. Once you have aligned the burner, it's now time to set up the flame. Now there's two flames of these burners. There's an outer flame and an inner flame. You want the inner flame so it just touches the case. It is essential you set up the flame the same every time. Now I've turned the flame on but I've left the case off. You want to line up the inner blue flame so it's just on the left hand side of the case guide. So when a case falls into position there, the inner blue flame is just going to touch the case. Now you have to do this the same every time. This is how you get your consistency with your annealing. Now two sacrificial cases with temperature indicating paint on. I have set my machine up at 63, which I think is about a good starting stage for 308 cases. So once I press the on button, it'll start spinning at 63 RPM straight away. All I gotta do now is put my two cases here in the hopper and turn the torch on. I'll do that now. Now I've set the flame up as before. As I said, I'll turn the machine on. It's already on 63 RPM. And then I'll drop a case in here and we'll see if this paint disappears. Not too bad to start with. I reckon that's pretty spot on. That's how I would do my cases. You could probably go one speed slower. 62, let's have a look. This time it's a little darker, but same result. I reckon that's perfect, spot on. 62 would be fine. Now I've turned the RPM up to 69, so it's spinning a lot faster and it should be under annealing now. So I'll show you what that'll look like. You can see the template hasn't quite burnt off in all along the neck there. And it's still visible on the shoulder. That's under annealed in my opinion. We'll do an over annealed one. I've slowed the machine down to 50 RPM. I've annealed a case and we'll drop it in there and see what it looks like when we over anneal a case. Now the template's gone black. I think that's over annealed. It's meant to go opaque, not get burnt.
Just a quick overview of how to use Templic, which is available from the temperatureshop.com.au or on eBay. Now, to apply Templic, give the bottle a good shake, grab a clean case, and lightly paint the outside of the neck and shoulder. The case on the right has the right amount of template on it. The one on the left, it's too much. It's still drying. It'll take forever to get that off. Now the anneal cases here from right to left. Right, I think is perfectly annealed. Center, under annealed. And the left, over annealed. The paint's meant to go opaque, not get burnt. There's still a little bit showing on the center one. On a side note, please do not use color change as an indicator of annealing time. Both these pieces of brass have been annealed to the correct temperature. The bottom one are 338 and the top one are 308. As you can see, the Lapool brass on the bottom has changed color significantly, whereas the top one, ADI piece of brass, has not.